Shalom. Uh, we're just going to get right back into the subject. This is just to end out the lesson on uh, the Queen of Heaven, the Statue of Liberty. And uh, I'm just going to go through some of this information uh, just to end out and to show you, brothers, that this is, uh, this is all prophesied to come. This is nothing new. There's nothing new under the sun. The same thing that Jake is doing now and and now Esau done adopted the ways of these heathens. You know, he's a heathen himself, but our people are following after these the different things. They've done it before. They're just coming back and doing the same exact thing, okay? So we're going to read right here in Wikipedia. And uh, it's uh, Astarte. And it says Astarte or Asheroth, Greek. Astari, it says, is, is the Hellenized form of the Middle East goddess Ishtar. It says, uh, worship from the Bronze Age through the classical antiquities. The name is particularly associated with her worship in the ancient uh, Levant among the Canaanites and Phoenicians. She was also celebrated in Egypt following the uh, importation of uh, Levantine, Levantine culture there. The name Ashtore is some, sometimes also applied to her cult in Mesopotamian cultures like uh, Assyria and Bab uh, Babylon, Babylonian, Salakia. Um, we're going to write down here. Uh, it says, Astari was connected with fertility, sexuality, and war. And what does America, what does America do most? They have what? The, uh, the sexuality here, you know, do as thy wilt with the, the homosexuality, different things. And then they have the war, okay? And then they go into fertilities, the, the the artificial insemination and different things of that. So I'm just going to pull this up real quick so we can look at it. All right. So this is it all over again. It's just recycled. It's nothing new. That's why he said he's going to burn this whore. This, this... This woman is going to be burnt, man. Okay, he's allowed it to, to come to the greatest wickedness that it can, and then it's going to be, uh, how you say, punished for the things that it's done. Mainly the people that worship after these false idols. They can't, this can't get up. This can't save you. This ain't going to be able to save you, man. There's only going to be one thing that's going to be able to save you in these last days if you're on the land of America and parts of the world is Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Okay? So let's go back and read this. And it says, Istari was connected with fertility, sexuality, and war. Her symbols were the lion, the horse, the phoenix, the dove, and a star within a circle, indicating the planet Venus. Uh, pictorial representations often show her naked. <laughs> See, naked. She has been known as the defiled evening star. Uh, Astari was worshipped in Syria and in, in Canaan be, uh, beginning that's why the Lord now you can see why the Lord told us to go in there and slay all of them because there were it says uh, idolatry is a form of witchcraft so they were all witches so they couldn't so they couldn't live man okay hold on I got a quick quick precept this is the book of Psalms 81 it's the book of Psalms 81, and we'll start at verse 8. And it says, Hear, O my people, and I will testify unto thee, O Israel, if thou will hearken unto me. There shall no strange God be in thee, neither shalt thou worship any strange power. It says, I am the Lord thy power, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt, opening, open thy mouth wide, and I will fill it. But my people would not he hearken to my voice, and Israel with none of me. So I gave them up unto their own hearts, lust, and they walked in their own counsel. See, and that's what the Lord did unto us. But what is he doing now? He's turning back the hearts of the elect. The 144,000 and the 130 Yasharala that's set to make it. That's who the hearts he's turning back to and giving the faith to believe upon his name and to call upon him. Not these other I idolatry gods out here. Which can't save at all. And uh, here's a quick picture of it. Because I just wanted to show the picture. And uh, 
get into this I'm going to read a little bit of this article and uh, Laura Woolen I'll post the links for you brothers to look at it and it says uh, Semiramis priest Nimrod Tammuz and his relationship with Mary and uh, Jesus that's the right word to put there it ain't, it ain't talking about our Messiah it says in the year 3000 BC Babylon was was a woman known as Semiramis Ishtar or Easter it says uh, other names in English the Bible refers to Ash, uh, Ashtaroth and a Astari many called her Semiramis which became Queen of Babylon Semiramis had adopted a child as as uh, adopted a child as a child which called him Nimrod according to the Bible Nimrod was a descendant of uh, Abraham the grandson of Noah through the line of Ham it was the natural son of Cush, but legally heir to Shem can be seen in the episode of the Tower of Babel. She was the mother of Nimrod, but later became his wife. Babylonians came to regard as as a goddess Semiramis. All they wanted all all they wanted closer to Semiramis and enjoyed the privilege of the country. Had to bring the newborn child Semiramis to Nimrod, called a cult. The worship of Nimrod was called Molo or Mola. Worship carry worships Mola worship carried the children in in body and soul and threw it at the stake. See in Palin. Goes back into Molech, man. Because Molech required child sacrifice. It says part of the Babylonians were agreement and not, not others. They chose to kill Nimrod and, and, succeed, and succeeded. When her husband was killed, she reportedly became the ruler of the kingdom from, from, him, from him. But like many of the subjects did not believe that Nimrod was the god um, he had claimed to be, Semiramis feared losing control over them. She knew she had, to, had come up with something that looked like a great miracle, something that would fill the people with wonder and real, really shown that Nimrod was a god. Semiramis acted quickly in, in bed with one of the priests and being pregnant led, led, um, it says, uh, led to believe that Babylonian god Nimrod had been reincarnated. So you can see here, okay, this is a little brief little history. I mean, you can see that depicted her in Egypt. In different places so it's the same so-called God being re reincarnated deity and you can see here with the winged you see the different name Ishtar, Ishtari, Anan, Ashtaroth, Astart and there's different names we this one right here I stopped to show you this picture see the horned headdress that goes right back to here see the horned headdress Statue of Liberty it's not a coincidence so I'm gonna read these this is the book of Judges. It's the book of Judges 3 and 7. And it says, And the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord, and forgot the Lord their power, and served Balaam and the, and, and the groves. And that groves goes back into Ashtaroth. Alright. Um, this is Judges 2 and verse 13. And it says, And they forsook the Lord and served Balaam in Ashtaroth, and, and the anger of the Lord was hot against Israel. And he delivered them into the hands of the spoiler and that spoiled them and, the, and sold them into the hands of their enemies round about, so that they could not any longer stand before their enemies. Okay, uh, jump to 1 Samuel 12 and verse 10. This is 1 Samuel 12 and verse 10, and it says, And they cried unto the Lord and said, We have sinned because we have forsaken the Lord and have served Balaam and Ashtaroth, but now deliver us to the uh, says, Deliver us out of out deliver us out of the hands of our enemies, and we shall serve thee. Because what happens when Israel starts getting jacked up, they want to cry back unto the Lord. You know? They want to cry back unto the Lord because they the Yahweh Shim Yahushua is the one that actually can save. He's the one with the true power. Um, this is uh, jump to 7 and 3. This is 1 Samuel 7 and verse 3. And it says, And Samuel spake unto all the house of Israel, saying, If ye do return unto the Lord with all your hearts, then put away the strange gods 
and Ashtoreth from among you, and prepare your hearts unto the Lord, and serve him only, and he will deliver you out of the hand of the Philistines. All right. And now we're going to jump to Zechariah. This is the book of uh, Zechariah. This is Zechariah 2 and 7. And it says, Deliver us, o, it says, Deliver, thy, deliver thyself, O Zion, that dwelleth in the daughter of Babylon. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, After the glory have I sent, sent me unto you, unto the nations which spoiled you. For he that toucheth you touches the apple of his eye. So at the end of the day, the Lord has always loved us. It's like a hard-headed child. You know, you love your child and, and, and it hurts you when you see him go off the way they do. But the best thing is, it says, uh, he, he that spareth the uh, rod spoileth the child. So the Lord had to beat us. He had to put us through these things to show you that these idols are just idols, man. They're not going to save. Yahweh Shem is the one that we need to continue to pray to and to give glory unto. And this is the book of Isaiah 47 and 1. This is the book of Isaiah 47 and verse 1. And it says, Come down and sit in the dust, O virgin daughter of Babylon. Sit on the ground. There is no throne, O daughter of the Chaldeans. But thou shalt no more be called tender and delicate. Take the millstone and grind meal. Uncover the locks. Make bare the leg. Uncover the thigh. Pass over the river. And that's why what the Lord is doing by putting it out there. Because a lot of people don't know what this statue goes back to. They just think, oh, it's just a statue that's randomly there. But they don't. if they look into the deeper aspect of it they'll see that it's just nothing but I, a big old idol okay a big huge idol that's all it is and the lord detests those things he hates those things idols are the one thing that he's told because it's idolatry is a form of witchcraft and it says suffer not a witch to live this is the book of jeremiah this is the book of jeremiah we're gonna go to 51 and 6 it's the book of Jeremiah 51 and verse 6. And it says, Flee out of the midst of Babylon and deliver every man his soul. Be not cut off in their iniquities, for this is the time of the Lord's vengeance, and he will render unto her recompense. Babylon has been a golden cup in the Lord's hand that made all the earth drunken. The nations have drunken of her wine, therefore the nations are mad. Babylon is suddenly fallen and destroyed. How for her? Take bombs for her pain. If so, she may be healed. She ain't going to be healed, man. She's not going to be healed. Most High is going to utterly burn this place. He's going to put He's going to put a hurting on this place that has never been seen since there was a, a nation. This earth is going to rock to and fro when the Lord starts putting hands on Babylon. And that's why it says, come out of her, my people. We don't. You don't want to be here, man. Because this, this place is going to be a prime example. He's only raised it up. This place didn't have no power. This idol ain't have no power to raise itself up. The Lord allowed it to raise up. And he's going to be the one that's going to come down and punish it, man, to show that he's the one with true power. That's why he gave Esau all his technology and all his so-called uh, uh, that sword, that great sword. Because that that's just going to be so, because we see his his great sword, but the Lord said his, his is going to be greater. Just like Moses threw down that serpent and his serpent ate the other two serpents. Okay? And uh, this is the book of Psalms 137. This is the book of Psalms 137 in verse 8. This is the book of Psalms 137 in verse 8. It says, O daughter of Babylon, who art to be destroyed, happy shall he be that rewardeth thee as thou hast served us. You know, and how was that? Hardcore bondage and slavery, okay? So the Most High is going to punish this place and, and do much damage for his name's sake and for what has happened because he said, he that toucheth you touches the apple of his eye, okay? So with that, I'm going to give all praise to Yahweh, Bashim Yahweh Shai, Brachat the Yahweh, Brachat the Yahweh Shai. And, and much love to you elect men doing this work, Lord willing, and keep faith, man. We're, we're, we're almost home. Shalom.